Welcome back to another installment in our series, Questions Asked in the Old Testament. Question number three we find in the book of Genesis, chapter three. We'll read the entire chapter to give a context of the question asked. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig trees together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. First is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. The Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins, and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now, lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Our question for today is that which the devil by the agency of the serpent, asked, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? If you're keeping track, this is the first question recorded in the Bible. This chapter in the Bible has been examined in volumes of works over the centuries, so suffice it to say that within the time and space allotted here, we shall not endeavor to explore every aspect of this, only to consider the implications of what the object and purpose was of posing such a question. To start, let's actually fast forward some 4,000 years to a statement Paul makes in his letter to the church at Corinth. In 2 Corinthians 11.3, Paul says, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. This gives an historical context and not one of allegory or myth, so to speak, and Paul affirms by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that this did, in fact, occur. Jesus, too, affirms as much when he says in John 8, 44, You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. It is safe to say that the purpose of this question is not to confirm something that Satan had wanted to know or to make sure that Eve understood. Satan's intent 
was to deceive. Deception, temptation, and sin often lurk in the shadow of half-truths and almost-sos. Eve's response has puzzled many over the centuries and sparked not a few debates as to what she meant. However, the Apostle Paul clarifies some of the confusion in that he tells us that Satan deceived Eve. What's more, Paul desires those in Corinth to have a simplicity and a pure devotion to Christ. That gives us some insight into God's command. His command was simple and not as complicated as Satan's cunning deception led her to believe. Satan challenges Eve on the point that she won't die, and God's intention all along is to deny her to be godlike and knowing good from evil. He further appeals to the big three when he dangles the temptations that will haunt all mankind. The Apostle John identifies these in 1 John 2.16. He says that number one is the lust of the flesh. Eve saw it and it was good for food. Number two is the lust of the eyes. Eve thought it was a delight to the eyes. And number three, the boastful pride of life. The tree was desirable to make one wise. You might want to read Matthew chapter 4 and compare the tactics Satan used to tempt Jesus and see if you notice a pattern. So what was it in the question that was so devastating? We have the advantage of reflecting upon this situation, something Eve did not have prior to this. The subtlety of planting the seeds of doubt. Did God? Perhaps it is worth noting that Satan does not say Lord God, the expression of a covenant relationship, but merely God, the Hebrew word Elohim. I rather like the New American Standard Version's rendering, Indeed, has God said? An astonishment that God should deny this. The moment Eve opens her mouth to answer, the hook is set, as they say in the language of anglers. One is reminded of the warning Solomon gives in Proverbs 26.4. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest he be like him yourself. We may long speculate that scene in the garden and wonder at the myriads of minutiae to be pondered upon. Yet one thing is paramount to remember. The question of deceivers are so often laced with the poison of doubts and insinuations. But we would never fall for that old trick, now would we? And Lord willing, let's meet again tomorrow to look at another question from the Old Testament.